In the last video we looked at a solution to the equation of motion for a mass on a spring. So the motion does not involve friction, so the mass oscillates indefinitely on the spring. We looked at horizontal springs and vertical springs and the equation of motion is the same in both cases. We saw that the solution is a sinusoidal function. That is a function of the form a sine omega t plus phi or we could use a cos omega t plus phi, but I've decided to use sine, it doesn't matter. a, omega and phi are constants, they're fixed values. t is the independent variable of course. We saw that omega, the coefficient of t, is the square root of k over m, where k is the spring constant and m is the mass attached to the spring. We also saw that a is the what's called the amplitude of the motion. It's the maximum displacement of the mass from its equilibrium position. In this video we're going to look at a particular example. The example that we will use is 2 sine 3t plus 1. Here is a graph of this function. We can see that the amplitude is 2 so the graph goes from minus 2 to plus 2. So the maximum displacement of the mass from its equilibrium position is 2. 2 units, 2 meters, whatever. Now let's look at the meaning of omega. Omega for this function is 3. x of t is a periodic function. The period of the sine function is given by 2 pi over the coefficient of t. So it's 2 pi over omega, so this is an important formula. So for our example, the period is 2 pi over 3, omega is 3, so the period is 2 thirds pi. The period is the time taken for one complete oscillation of the particle. So let's pick some point on this graph. Let's say this point here. This is the position of the particle at some time. The position is actually 2. This is, this is the maximum displacement of the particle. So the particle has reached its maximum height. Its position is plus 2 at say whatever this time is. And follow one complete oscillation. Consider the time taken for one complete oscillation. So we can see that that time taken is this interval here. So the length of this interval is 2 pi over 3. So that's the period. Capital T is used to denote the periodic time the time taken for one complete oscillation. So the horizontal axis here is of course the t-axis. The vertical axis is the displacement x. We could of course get 2 pi over 3 as a decimal. So we have 2 multiplied by pi and we divide by 3. So we get 2.09. I'll round that to one place of decimals. 2.1. So the length of this line here should be approximately 2.1. Now for those who haven't seen this before, let's do a quick proof that the period of this function is indeed 2 pi over omega. Now you might have seen this if you've studied trigonometry. But first of all we consider x at any time t. Well that's just a sine omega t plus phi. Now let's consider the value of x at a time t plus the period later. So the period we're saying is 2 pi over omega. So just to show you that this works out, let's calculate x at t plus the period. So it's going to be a sine of omega. For t we plug in t plus 2 pi over omega. We add on the phi. Now, 
let's multiply omega in here. So we have omega times t. Omega times 2 pi over omega. Well, the omegas cancel and we get 2 pi. And we also have phi. Now let's consider the difference between x of t, which is this here, and x of t plus the period, which is this here. Well, we can see the difference is 2 pi. 2 pi is the smallest number that we can add on to omega t plus phi so that the sine function isn't changed. The value of the sine function at omega t plus phi plus 2 pi is the same as the value of the sine function at omega t plus phi. 2 pi radians is equivalent to 360 degrees. It's like adding 360 degrees onto omega t plus phi. And the value of the sine function isn't affected by that, so we're, we've just done a full revolution, if you like. Think of the unit circle. So 2 pi is the smallest number we can add to omega t plus phi uh, so that the sine function isn't changed. So you see that these are indeed equal. So now you see that if we add 2 pi over omega onto any time t, we do not change the value of x of t. So x of t is equal to x of t plus 2 pi over omega. So this distance here is 2 pi over omega. Well, omega is 3 in this case. That's the period. So on the graph, if we want to get x of t, we go to our time t. It could be anywhere. And we just go and read off what x of t is. This would be x of t. But we would get the same answer if for x of t, same value for x of t, if we consider the value of x at t plus the period, t plus 2 pi over omega. So this distance here is 2 pi over omega. So you see we get the same value for x. So this here is one oscillation, one cycle or oscillation. Well, it's one cycle of the, fun the sine function. We could say it's one oscillation of our mass. Now, the next thing we will consider is the frequency of the motion. The frequency of the motion is the number of oscillations in one second. So, we could think of the time for one oscillation is the period, of course. We could think of this as an equation. So 2 pi over omega seconds. And we want to consider the number of oscillations in one second. So we could say one oscillation is 2 pi over omega seconds. So what is one second? How many oscillations is one second? Well, looking at this as an equation, we could multiply both sides by omega over 2 pi. So we'd multiply 1 by omega over 2 pi. 1 times over omega over 2 pi is, of course, omega over 2 pi oscillations in one second, because 2 pi over omega times omega over 2 pi is 1. So we take the reciprocal of this number, multiply both sides by it, and we give the, we get the number of oscillations in one second. This number is called the frequency. So you can see that the frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So f is equal to 1 over the period, which is omega over 2 pi. It's the number of oscillations in one second. The units would be hertz. So in our example, f omega is 3. So f equals 3 divided by 2 pi. We can get that as a decimal, so we can look back to the graph. Just refer it back to the graph. 3 divided by 2 pi. I will round this number to two decimal places, 0 0.48. So this is the number of oscillations or cycles in one second. I could call it cycles, it doesn't matter. Cycles are oscillations. 0 0.48 cycles per second, or slash second, or we could say 0 0.48 hertz. So, 
let's just look at this graph. Let's look at a time interval of one second. Let's say the time running from three to four seconds. So we have this much. Uh, so this green portion of the graph represents 0.48 of a full cycle, roughly half of a full cycle. So we have half of a full cycle here over a time interval of one second. If we double that time interval, we will have nearly a full cycle. The period was actually 2.1 seconds to one decimal place. So one divided by 2.1 is 0 0.48. So it all kind of makes sense. In one second, we will cover 0.48 of a cycle, or roughly half of a cycle. In about two seconds, well, exactly 2.1 seconds roughly, we will have a full cycle. Finally, I should mention something about the phase phi. The phase comes into the initial conditions. That is the value of x when t is 0. So we just plug 0 in for t. So we have omega times 0 is 0. So we end up at a sine of phi, which is this value here on the graph. So when t is naught, the position of the mass is a sine phi. So the initial position of the mass does not necessarily have to be the amplitude. You know, we don't have to have the timer starting when the amplitude is, or sorry, the mass is first displaced from its equilibrium position and released. That's how we get the mass moving, remember. We displace the mass from its equilibrium position, x equals zero, to some distance, which could be positive or negative. We could, if it's a vertical spring, we could compress the spring, say, up to a value of two, then release the mass and we have given the mass an amplitude of 2, so it'll oscillate from minus 2 to plus 2 indefinitely. So, you know, that's something we we could think of starting the timer at that instant when we have the mass displaced, but we don't necessarily have to do that. We could start, start the timer at any time. So even though the amplitude is 2, the initial position here is actually less than 2. For our example, the initial position is going to be 2 sine of 1. Remember, angles are in radians. So let's just get the initial position for this example. So we want to get the sine of 1, so make sure your calculator is in radians. Let's multiply this by 2. So to one decimal place, we have 1.7. So that's the initial position up here. This value of x is 1.7. So we set the timer when the mass, the position of the mass is 1.7. We start the timer off at zero and uh, then we can trace the motion for subsequent times. So phi determines the initial value of x. Of course a also determines it.